Welcome back, band family. I want to show you how to put together your xylophone or your bells set, depending on what you have at home. And we'll start to work a little bit on mallets beginning in this week's lesson. I'm super excited. So I have here my practice pad and the stand that it's on. And depending on what type of equipment that you have at home, you may end up using this same stand on your xylophone or your bell set. It kind of depends on which brand of equipment you have and what you have. Many of you have the xylophone kit. It's made by a company called Ludwig. Uh, Ludwig is a very old and famous drum company. And so if you have the Ludwig Musser uh, xylophone kit, we'll start with that one first. To begin, you can loosen up your stand and take the practice pad off, set that aside. You won't need that for this next part. Next, we need to figure out how to get the xylophone to stay on the top of this stand. It's a little bit trickier than it sounds. So to begin with, take the xylophone out of the rolling case and put it upside down. You'll notice that on the back of that xylophone, there's one extra special little wooden brace in about one third of the way up from the end. And that's the trick to this. What you'll do is you'll take the end of your stand and you're gonna hook it to the bottom of that xylophone. To do this, two of the arms of the basket will just grab those long rails in the xylophone. But that special extra wooden block is where the third one hooks up. So it sounds a little bit complicated, but once you see it done, it makes total sense. Basically take this, aim it at the bottom of the xylophone, have a parent help you, and get the end of this, the one end of it, hooked around that little wooden block. And then as you tighten this, you'll notice that the other two are gonna grab the long rails on the underside of the xylophone. Once it's there, have a parent help you flip it back around until it's right side up and you're ready to play. You'll probably need to adjust the height of this. Remember, lefty-loosey, righty-tighty, to get it to about waist level. The other way to do it is simply to take the xylophone and set it on the stand right side up. But it's a little bit tricky to do the first time because you need to figure out where that little special block is to get it to hook around the end of your tripod. Um, I think that the stand here, the basket on the end, if I remember correctly, it doesn't really matter which one of these hooks around that extra little block. You just need to have one of them do that and the other two grab the long rails. Now, if you instead have a metal bells set, orchestra bells, uh, orchestra bells have a different sound than a xylophone. It's a higher pitched sound and the item itself will look different. The bells set will look different. Typically on a student percussion bells kit that also has a practice pad, that end of the stand won't have this snare basket. Instead, it'll just have one little uh, post, one um, threaded, uh, kind of like a, like a bolt at the end. And that threaded bolt, you're going to insert into a practice pad. You can tighten the practice pad right on it. Or when it's time to play the bell set, you'll take the pad off and you will put the bell set on that same stand. And they can attach in different ways. Sometimes there are four arms on those baskets and they'll just kind of grab um, the sides of the bell kit. Other times there's a metal plate on the bottom of the bell set and you, you can insert the top of that threaded stand in there and spin it to lock it into place. Yeah, there's a lot of different designs for uh, the bell kits. And so you kind of have to figure out which version you have and how to assemble it. In case you bought yours used and it doesn't have instructions, uh, make sure you ask a parent to help you figure out how to attach it together. Since there is a fair amount of, of equipment management going on between uh, going from the pad to the xylophone and the xylophone to the pad, what I recommend you do each day is to start with whatever you ended with the previous day. So for example, today, if you start with xylophone and then switch to the pad at the end of your practice session, tomorrow when you practice, start with whatever you have, switch it to the other, and then so on and so forth. So today, if you go from xylophone to pad, tomorrow it's already set up in the pad, begin with the pad, playing the drum stuff, and then switch to xylophone at the end. That's the easiest way. The other alternative, and I'll just throw this out there, some families will elect to buy a second stand. In fact, uh, the other kind of stand you can use with a xylophone is what we call an X stand. It's uh, Usually it's black metal, and it's, it's shaped like, uh, like an X. It's hinged in the middle, and you can go like this and set, for example, a, a synthesizer or a keyboard on there, or a mallet instrument like a xylophone. So 
they're usually about 20, 30 bucks. So it might be something to think about just getting a second stand for your xylophone. That way you set up the X stand, put the xylophone on top and just leave it. And then you can put your pad in this stand and just leave it. Then you don't have to go back and forth at all. That's probably the easier way. For me, uh, the instruments that I have in back here, the marimba and the vi vibraphone, they don't have snare stands that they're on. They have their own special equipment frames because these are literally like hundreds and hundreds of pounds of weight. And so they have specially designed frames that they're on. So I just leave these set up all the time and I, I'm not taking them down and setting them up. It would take forever. When I bought these instruments, just to try to get them in the house, I had to completely disassemble them, get them down my stairs into my basement. And it was, it was a whole big deal. So I really don't want to have to move these instruments anytime soon. <laughs> Let's talk about implements. In other words, the kind of sticks or mallets you're gonna use on each item. For a snare drum or for a practice pad on which you're practicing snare, you'll use snare sticks. I mentioned in a previous lesson that we wanna make sure we're using concert snare sticks since we're working on concert snare drum. That's different than drum set sticks. Similarly, the kind of implements you'd use on a mallet instrument like xylophone or bells or marimba or vibraphone is different yet. Let me show you my collection of sticks and mallets. Now you probably have a stick bag. The stick bag is very important to have because you're gonna put your sticks and your mallets in it and you'll take that stick bag back and forth to school. And that's kind of nice for percussionists because the only thing you need to bring back and forth is just your music folder and then that stick bag. And when you're at school, we'll have larger instruments. We'll have a xylophone, we'll have a vibraphone, we'll have bigger instruments for you to play, including a snare drum and a bass drum and everything else. Your current pad and your xylophone, you can leave all that at home. Don't have to take it back and forth, just the stick bag. Now, as you get older, you probably add on additional sticks and mallets for additional instruments. So, ugh, this is my stick bag. And I'll show you a little bit of what's inside of it. So over here, I have different sticks. I have a pair of concert snare sticks, right? I have a second pair of concert snare sticks that have smaller, a uh, smaller bead at the end for a different kind of sound. And yet another pair of concert snare sticks. I have a number of uh, pairs of drum set sticks. I normally have a pair of marching band sticks in the end here. I must have them somewhere else. <laughs> oh, they're over here. I moved them. And there's different kinds of marching band sticks. These are the kind you'd use on a marching snare. And these are a little bit shorter. These would use on marching tenors. Those are the multi-toms. I also have some other special effects sticks. And these are special thin kind of sticks called timbale sticks that you use on certain kind of a Cuban drum called timbales. In the back, I have timpani mallets. Uh, timpani sometimes called kettle drums, those, those big drums that you can tune to a specific pitch. They're kind of unique among the drums we play because they're the only ones that have a specific pitch, A, B, C, D. Over on this side, I have all the different kind of mallets I used for the mallet instruments. On the end here, I have the kind of mallets I would use on orchestra bells. So orchestra bell mallets are usually a hard plastic, very, very hard plastic. So those are standard orchestra bell mallets. And then I have a pair of brass mallets as well. These can be used on bells, but you have to be very careful because there's different kinds of orchestra bells and some can be damaged by brass mallets. The kinds that you have at home right now, if you have a bells set at home, don't use brass mallets. These will destroy them because the kind you have at home are probably made out of aluminum. Aluminum is soft. Uh, and so these would dent those bells. Don't use brass mallets on your bells set at home. However, at school, we have the really heavy steel bells sets and you can use brass mallets on those if the music calls for it. Usually we don't. M much more common to use the plastic bells mallets. And then we also have xylophone mallets. Xylophone mallets are usually made out of a, a softer rubber or a soft plastic. These are my favorite pair of xylophone mallets. They're, uh, uh, they're signature mallets from a guy named Bob Becker. And so the Bob Becker Blues, these sound great on xylophone. These are a very soft plastic. Um, you can also get rubber mallets for xylophone. You probably have rubber mallets if you have a, a rental uh, xylophone. To play the marimba over here uh, to my left, this is a, a much larger instrument than a xylophone. And if you look at the bars in the very end, they're very large, very thin, and very low pitched. So I would use yarn wrapped mallets. And these are 
uh, kind of like a xylophone mallet in that they have a rubber head on the inside, but then it's been wrapped in yarn. So we had always used yarn mallets on a marimba. And typically, the reason I have so many different mallets for marimba is that if you play towards the higher end of the marimba, you'd use much smaller mallets. And towards the bigger end of the marimba, you'd use bigger mallets. And I typically have groups of four mallets for each size because uh, it's quite common to play with uh, four mallets at a time if you're playing marimba. You'd have two mallets in each hand. So if you remember that instrument fitting video that I sent you guys earlier in the summer, there was a clip at the end of a percussion group from Santa Clara, California called Vanguard, and all the mallet players are all playing with four mallets there. So typically on marimba at higher levels, we'll play with four mallets. The vibraphone, which is behind me, it's a different sound. It's kind of like a, a marimba in that it's a lower pitched, but the notes can sustain, they can ring out. And there's a pedal on the bottom to dampen the sound of them, kind of like you'd find a damper pedal on, um, or a sustain pedal on a piano. And so we can use uh, yarn mallets on a vibraphone as well. Although typically we'd actually use chord mallets. And chord mallets are a little bit different style. They have uh, a different material at the end that they're wrapped with cord rather than yarn. And like with marimba, we typically would play with four mallets at a time at a higher level for vibraphone. But oftentimes vibraphone players will use a different grip. Um, the kind of grip we use looks like this, which is a little bit different than the grip we'd use on uh, marimba. So yeah, I have a lot of different mallets here because kind of like uh, if you look at uh, people that work with tools that build things, you have to have the right tool for the right job. If you have a, a, a hammer, you wouldn't want to use it on a screwdriver, right? So you always want to make sure you have the right kind of tools for the right kind of job. So at home right now, if you have a xylophone, make sure you're using the xylophone mallets on that xylophone. The xylophone mallets are probably, again, either a soft plastic or a rubber. If you have a, a bells set at home, a metal bells set, use the hard plastic bells mallets. You have to be careful because if you use the wrong type of mallet and the wrong instrument, you could damage them. For example, if you took um, uh, hard xylophone mallets made out of a soft plastic or a rubber and you used them on the lower end of a marimba, you could dent that marimba. It would leave a little dents in the wood. That would be bad. The vibraphones are made out of aluminum and aluminum is soft and that's why we use yarn mallets or cord wrapped mallets. If I used a xylophone mallet on a vibraphone, it would absolutely dent those bars. So I need to use softer mallets for those. So you have to always make sure that you're using the correct mallet for the correct instrument. The way we hold a mallet for playing one of these mallet instruments is the same way we would hold a drumstick. If we hold a drumstick by having it go diagonally across our palm, thumb and first finger right across there, wrap these fingers around just like that, using a combination of wrist and fingers, we do the same thing with mallets. We're gonna hold it uh, crossways, or diagonally rather, across our palm, thumb and first finger wrap around, three fingers wrap around the backside, and we're gonna use wrist and fingers. The difference though is that it's going to be a very skinny shaft on this uh, mallet compared to the stick. And so whereas it's nice and comfortable to grab the stick and you feel like you have a really good grip on it, the mallet with a lot of weight on the end and a much thinner shaft can be a little bit tricky to control at first. So that's what I want you to work on this week. Start by holding it correctly, okay? And uh, try some finger exercises. You can do some of this. You might notice that the, the shaft flops around a little bit. Get used to that. And uh, you'll notice that when you play on a mallet instrument, there's like no bounce. The very first uh, day I bounced a, a tennis ball off my drum pad, and both because it's a tennis ball and also because it's a hard drum pad that has a certain amount of bounce to it, it bounced right off. But with these, when you play a mallet on a mallet instrument, it, there's no bounce. It doesn't bounce up at all. You actually have to lift up that mallet the entire time. That's why we started working on drum pads first to give you that nice relaxed approach. Now, as you play on mallet instruments, you have to get used to this idea of lifting for the rebound stroke every time. To find the right note on a mallet instrument, whether it's your xylophone or bells or my marimba or vibraphone, it's shaped the same way as a piano. So we call the notes on a marimba or a xylophone or any other mallet instrument white and black notes, even though they're all the same color. I mean, you say, Mr. T, it's brown or it's gold or it's silver. Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> but the notes that are on the bottom part closest to you, we call those white notes because they'd be the white keys on a piano. And those groups of notes that are farther away, 
that are groups of two and three, we call those black notes. Even though, again, even though the notes on our instruments are all the same color, we still refer to them as white and black because that's what they would look like on a piano. And remember, that's why it's so important that all percussionists already know how to play piano because I'm not gonna teach you how to play piano. It's assumed you already know how to find all those notes on the piano. So this week, what I want you to do is I want you to find two notes on your xylophone or your bells set. I want you to find F and D. To find them, it's exactly the way you'd find an F or a D on a piano. The D is the note that's in between the two black notes. It's the white note in between the two black notes. The F, on the other hand, is a white note that's just to the left of the three black notes. I want you to go to your xylophone or your bell set, have your mouths out in playing position, put your right hand, hover it right over where the F is, and put your left hand where the D is. And they're gonna be about that far apart. Um, whereas the snare drum, usually we're at about a 90 degree angle. For mallets, we might be a little bit less. And have your mallets hovering right over those two keys. And then try playing eight on a hand. Right hand on F, left hand on D. And get used to playing that same eight on a hand exercise on mallets, just like you have on snare drum. If you'd like, for an extra bonus, you can also try experimenting on the F and the D, right hand on F, left hand on D, and try playing some of the other sticking patterns alternating. You can do doubles. You can do paradiddles. And the same principles that apply to snare drum apply to mallets, using our wrist, using our fingers, making sure that the, the first finger and thumb are right across from each other. The thumb goes down the stick, form a T with that thumb and first finger. Don't let this, the fingers flop against the mallets. The one difference though, in addition to having to lift up that upstroke each time, since there is no bounce to these instruments, is we can choke up a little farther on a mallet instrument. The higher in pitch the instrument is, usually the farther we choke up. So for a xylophone, you might have a little extra stick out the backside. If you are playing bells, it might be even a little bit farther up. If you're playing a marimba though, usually we're gonna be farther back. And if you're gonna play a uh, four mallet uh, on marimba, a grip which you can learn in high school, you'll notice that as I have these mallets in my hand, I'm gonna hold them all the way back at the very, very ends, partly because that's the way the grip works, but also because I want that extra reach uh, for four mallet grips. Caution, Texas method. Do not try to teach yourself the four mallet grip right now. Do not try to teach yourself anything other than what I'm telling you because guaranteed, if you try to teach yourself, you'll almost certainly do it incorrectly. And later on, when we try to teach you the correct formal grip, it's gonna be really hard to fix these bad habits. So don't even try to hold the sticks uh, two in each hand because you're just gonna start getting comfortable with the wrong uh, way to hold it. You're gonna teach yourself bad habits. So. There's plenty of time for that. I don't think I learned to play four mallet until I was maybe 18 years old. So if you learn it in high school, you'll be years ahead of where I was. So wait for that, we'll get there in time. In the meantime, F and D. Until next time, go practice.